Frontier, American English Guide 2. I don't think I'm gonna change the name of the channel, but uh, I'm in my classroom getting ready for the day. What I'm doing with some of the older live lessons on the other channel, speak English with this guy, uh, I'm putting them here. I'm deleting them from the other channel and putting them here just in case you want to uh, see them. This one is an old one from like August, 2020. The information is still good. You're going to hear uh, a native English teacher speak hopefully clear English for about an hour. So hope it helps and best part about it, no ads. So hope you enjoy. Oh, can you uh, like and subscribe, all that stuff? Thanks so much, see ya. All right, looks like we're live. Hopefully everything goes well for us. My neighbor's mowing his lawn, so I don't think that will be too loud. But Aroni was wondering if it was a pure hockey shirt. Nope, not today. How's the sound? Nope, not today. Not bad, not bad. Hope everyone is doing well today. I'm in a different area of my house, as you can see. I tried to get some white flowers in there. So I don't have the white garage door or the brown fence. I'm in front of some white flowers. So welcome everyone. Sharif is here. Luke is here. Hamity is back. I'm glad to see you're back. Hopefully I'm doing a good job for you, answering those questions. Hopefully you're learning a lot. Aniko, Michelle, saw Rod in here earlier. Mega was here earlier. Angelo is here. What is going on? Hopefully you've seen the conversation Rod and I had. A lot of nice comments. Thank you so much. So if you are new here, the way this works is that for about one hour, I answer as many questions as I can. I try not to talk too quickly. Sometimes I get excited and talk a little bit more quickly than I should. And uh, then in about an hour, I am going to hop over, phrasal verb there, I am going to hop over and be in Bob the Canadian's chat. Bob the Canadian, by the way, made a very generous donation yesterday. So um, Rod and I are raising money for an organization in Brazil to help people who are differently abled. Daniel, first question of the day, is wondering why I don't release my own Brent brand. Yeah, maybe one day. I think I have to get 30,000 subscribers and maybe I will. Until then though, I don't think anybody wants anything, but I need to come up with something, some kind of catchphrase, maybe. Hope this helps, right, Daniel? put on the uh, banner. Thanks for the banner again. Semiconductor Devices is here. Welcome. Dulich from Vietnam. Tom. Tom from Vietnam. Welcome. In an upcoming video, I visit a berry farm, but while I am picking blueberries in the row next to me, I think I hear a conversation in Vietnamese. I put that in the video and I'm hoping someone can tell me. Is that Vietnamese? It could have been Thai, I'm not sure. To me, those two languages sound very similar. I'm sure to someone who speaks Thai or Vietnamese, you're probably wondering, what? They are not similar at all. All right, so I am going to look for some questions, Daniel, don't think I forgot about the Discord server. Kind of busy, but we're about to put it out. I did. I joined Discord. I might be a little too old. I don't know. All right. Tom is a tour guide. Nice. And Watt is here. Welcome. Another question. This is an easy one. I can answer this. Anuat. Anuat asks, hi, Brent. How are you doing? I... I'm doing really well, actually. It's a Saturday morning here in the United States. It's kind of cloudy, but nice. And I do want to film a video at Portland Headlight. I mentioned that yesterday. It's a beautiful place. I don't know if I will go today or not. Wow, 
Vietnam is in the house. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah, Rod is talking about the Brentley adjective. I had not heard of that before. I had heard of Brent the Dent. I told that story. How elementary kids, five, six years old. When I was five or six years old, my friends would call me Brent the Dent. They thought that hurt my feelings. I just thought it was weird. So, water bottle, I'll put a dent. I'll put a dent in my water bottle. Brent the Dent. It didn't hurt my feelings. It just made me... How can you be a dent? Maybe if they said my head was dented, maybe I would have cried, but... All right. Ah, semiconductor devices. Thank you. I hope... Uh, you like the flowers back there. Wilson is here from Hello Talk. Welcome. Um, Tom is wondering, have I ever been to Vietnam? No, I would like to. I've watched a few YouTube videos from Vietnam. Harold Balder was in Vietnam about a year ago. I love that guy's channel. Um, Anthony Bourdain is, uh, well, was. He's dead. Um, he was a world traveler, chef. He had a show here in the United States, and he said Vietnam was the most beautiful country. So I would love to visit Vietnam one time. Sunshine is here from Armenia, speaking of beautiful countries. Um, Michelle is wondering, Brent, do Americans... My neighbor across the street is mowing his lawn. Um, can't he see I'm trying to live stream? Uh, do Americans still have furnaces? Uh, yeah. Um, I think I have a furnace. I have a hot water heater. I have a big oil tank that I've shown in a video not long ago. I think I have a furnace. My heat is something we call forced, forced hot air. That's what we call it forced hot air and where I live in Maine you really need forced hot air we don't have air conditioning in our house we have window units we call them so they're little air conditioners you put in the windows we don't have central air most most houses in Maine don't have central air and that's when air cool air goes through the whole house but we do have a furnace, I believe. Forced hot air. So I don't know how it works, but warm air is blown through some vents in my house. And I just push a button and it gets warm. I like that. What? Angelo says he is visiting Armenia next March? No way. Angelo, if I remember correctly, is from... Thailand, but now lives in Qatar. That would be amazing. That's, that's, that's around the world. Armenia. I would love to visit. So in the United States, we say uh, Qatar. Qatar, I believe. Qatar. Philippines. Sorry. Sorry. Qatar. Is that correct? Qatar. That's how we say it. Um... Okay, Wilson, great question right here. What's the difference between Phil... Okay, I'm going to change that a little bit. What's the difference between fill in a form... All right, you could say fill in a form, or you could say fill out a form. Totally the same thing and fill up a car. So when you go to the doctor's office for the first time, they may ask you, hey, can you fill out this form? We need your insurance information. Or they might say, can you fill out this form? Same thing. But filling up a car, I actually made a video about driving phrasal verbs. And yeah, you just put gas into the car. Put gas into the car but we call fill it up. Well, I don't know why. We could say fill it in, 
but we don't. We say fill it up. And it might be because of the gas gauge. The gas gauge, either empty or full. And maybe that's why we say about the tank, fill it up. I don't know. Uh, at one time, well, my wife and I might say this when we are in the car together and we're getting gas, I might say, do you want me to fill it up? If I say that, that means all the way, all the way. Do you want me to fill it up? Yeah, fill it up. Put all the gas in there, you can, until it starts spewing out of the tank. No, maybe not that, not that much, not that much. Oh my gosh, so Luke, Ivana, they're both from Poland. It seems like they're going to the beach every day. They're going to the beach every day. Uh, Luke sent me some beautiful video from Bulgaria, I believe. I don't think you were in Poland when you sent that. Oh, well, maybe you were. Oh, man. I live near a beach, but it is uh, cold. It's hard to get in the water, especially when you're a boomer and you're old. When I was a teenager, I'd jump right in. And the water temperature might be 60 degrees. But as a boomer, yeah. Uh, Cecilia says, I'm growing my beard. Yeah, so the reason I'm doing that is when I'm on camera, I definitely look older. I definitely look older. But it hides the blotchiness of my face. So if you can hide this face, you're gonna grow a beard, so I'm growing a beard. It's like I'm hiding my hair, or my lack of hair, with a hat. Mary is here, Iran. Welcome, Moshin is here, welcome. Oh gosh, here's a tough question. Oh, when are we, when are we allowed to use immigrated? Uh, they sound the same thing, oh my gosh. Um, this is a tough one right here. I, I believe we pronounce them the same way. Immigrate. That's a tough one. But think of M. Think of M as in in. I know it's not in. But think. Of, so if someone is immigrating, M, they're coming in to the country. When you look at, uh, this is the way I think of it. Immigrated, think of exit. Like it, it's almost exit. I hope I'm saying those correctly. They're, they're pronounced so similarly. Similarly, li, li. that's a tough word to say too. Athos is here from Greece. Welcome, welcome. Cutter, cutter. Where's Naima? I just saw the, the rose that Naima usually gives. I haven't seen her. I've seen her in the comments, but I haven't seen her in a live stream. I know lives get busy. Lives get busy. And Nori, if you're watching this on replay, we miss you. I know Nori is very busy right now too. Ah, Eric, let's talk about this. Power through something. Yes, power through something. Does it mean to persist or withstand something? It does, it does. So maybe you're studying very late at night and you have a test tomorrow and you start to get sleepy, but you are like, I just need to power through. I'm gonna keep studying until I know it all. And I'm sure there are some days that you have at work where you might have had lunch and then you're feeling sleepy, but you know you will get off work in three hours. You might say to yourself, oh, I can do it. I'm gonna power through. But yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, coffee. I don't like coffee though. That's why I um, put in the Mio in my water and Aroni doesn't like it, but I don't drink coffee. Gives me a headache. I like coffee. Mm. Rod says, I'm a digital influencer. 
I, I hope not, but I will never use that word influencer. Oh, it makes me cringe when people talk about themselves because I watch, I watch some YouTube videos on, um, you know, making better YouTube videos and they call themselves influencer. Like, that's awful. Never, never. Sam is here. Sam, Sam the Taiwanese. I was uh, listening to a podcast this morning and they mentioned Taiwan, how it's kind of a nation, but not a nation. This guy, his name is Sal, and he's been to every country in the world. I guess there are 193, I think he said. And then he mentioned others that are almost countries like Taiwan. Maybe one day there's a black fly that keeps buzzing around me. I think he moved on to greener pastures. So sometimes we say that moving on to greener pastures, meaning hopefully he found somebody better to bother. Ah, Michelle is wondering, can you possibly understand the Southern accent? Let's say uh, that the man lives in the boonies. Yes, I can. I lived in the South for seven years, so I can. But, and I might have to listen a little harder, but yes, I probably can. My mom, however, who has lived all of her life in Maine, in the North, she has problems. And sometimes on television shows in the United States, if somebody has a really thick Southern accent, they will put subtitles for Americans just so we can understand them. Oh, Luke invites me to Poland. I would love, I would love to go to Poland. I want to go to Bulgaria too. I don't think there are any viewers, but I'm thinking if I land in Milan, Milano, and visit Aroni, and then there's a train. I watched the video yesterday, Aroni, on somebody took a sleeper train. That's what we call it in English, where probably sounds exactly like what it is, you sleep on the train. 21 hours from Milan to Sicily. I think that would be fun. And then if I could somehow get over to Bulgaria and then I could go up through Hungary and Poland, but I can't do that right now because I'm an American. Nobody wants us around. We have too many diseases. Oleg is wondering, I've heard many Americans have guns. Do you have a gun? Yes. And I showed it on one of the live streams and Aroni did not like that. He said you could get blocked. So I won't show my gun, but it is, it's an older gun from World War II. So I don't shoot it, but yeah, many Americans have guns, but mostly for hunting and protection. So I, I really don't have a gun. I just have that old gun my father-in-law gave me. So Amina is wondering, what does it mean when something gets the best of you? It basically means they won. They won. So let's go back to that test that you powered through studying. Maybe you don't do very well on it. You can say that test got the best of you. Um, maybe if you are in an argument with a friend and they bring up a good point and you realize, oh, yeah, they're right. Got the best of me. I, I hope that, I hope that helps. It means to win. You admit defeat when something gets the best of you. Sunshine is wondering, take something with a grain of salt. That means that you're not sure that it's true. So I might say, man, I heard that uh, the latest number for coronavirus cases is 150,000. 
and deaths, I should say, deaths in the United States. But but take that with a grain of salt. I didn't I didn't do the research. I'm not sure. So and sometimes we say um, uh, don't hold me to that. Don't hold me to that. Another thing we can say when we're not sure of our facts. Maybe we heard it from an unreliable source. Whoops, I spelled source wrong, sorry. Source. Unreliable source. My neighbors are out today. They're being very loud. I should go over and tell them, hey, I'm live streaming. No, they're good. And uh, my neighbor actually has a garden. Somebody asked me to show what American gardens look like. And um, I could ask them. They're very nice. They're very nice. They would let me come over. I could come over right now with the camera and the microphone, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to invade their privacy. We might say that. All right. Um, more questions. More questions. Is there a storm door back there? Ah, yeah. Athos, we might call that... We might call that a storm door. We have those... Most most houses have that in Maine. Um, we use the air conditioner a lot, but if we didn't, we could put what's called a screen door. We could put a screen door for summer where the wind can blow through but the bugs can't get in. And then we could change that in the winter, but we just keep it for the winter. My neighbor also has a storm door, so we don't, we don't change it. Our summers are pretty short here. All right, more questions, more questions. Christopher is here, welcome. Sam the Taiwanese, Rod, just making sure I've said hello to everybody, Oleg. Henry is here. Hey, Henry, thank you so much for those Indonesian subtitles. Darn, I don't have a link for that. But Rod and Daniel have given Brazilian Portuguese subtitles. So if you are a Brazilian Portuguese English learner, you might like those. You might like those. And Rod and Daniel are both members you may want to become a member. I'll plug the member thing right now. There are a couple videos up there. They are not English lessons, but there are a couple videos up there. One where I visit the Dollar Tree and see a guy with a dog. And there is a preview of where I got kicked out of a supermarket. And that should come out, I think next Saturday, next Saturday. So if you want to become a member, check out that link. It's only a dollar a month and you get some perks and you help me out. You help me out because I bought, I bought that microphone. Next question. Oh my gosh. Oh, Mary, could I please make a sentence with, is that permeate? Permeate. I could. So permeate, permeate means if you think of a sponge, and it has all of those little holes, it means things can get through there. So you might say that a lot of activity on my street, people walking, my neighbors are out. You could say that the water has permeated the sponge. Because I'm thinking a lot of COVID right now, you could say COVID has permeated the United States right now. It's, it's gotten everywhere, except my state. Luckily, I think we had like 11 new cases yesterday. Um, Pablo, how are you, Pablo? I think Cecilia's brother, right? Cecilia's brother. Do you usually cut the grass or does somebody do it for you? So cutting lawns or cutting the grass is a big money maker in the United States. A lot of people do that as a profession. My brother, he cuts lawns, that's his job. Unfortunately, I am the one 
who cuts the lawn around here. When my son gets a little older, he's 13. He's, he's getting about ready to do it, but I like it done right. So I do it and it's good exercise. So, and I need all of the exercise I can get these days. All right. I don't know, man. Uh, I'm hoping so that I have premium speech. I hope so. Thank you. I hope so. Uh, I don't want to. Oh, um, okay. Mary says, uh, I, I think I just answered her question, but, and I'm working my way through the chat. She says she doesn't want to spam the chat. Thank you, Mary. And I do want to answer all of the questions. So if I don't answer it, feel free, hit it again. Just don't spam, but yeah, um, I'm trying to get to all the questions and uh, I don't think we need a Google form yet, but maybe I will put up another poll. It was really close last time, really close. But if people feel that I'm not answering all of the questions, then maybe we need a Google form. But I think with the Google form, I will be able to get to fewer questions. Fewer questions. Whoa, Daniel, that looks like a math question. The, I'm, I'm not a math guy. Let's see. Is there a wrong answer here? Um, if I could choose between having $10,000 now, oh, or $40,000 in five years, which would I choose? 40,000 in five years. But, but but I've talked about this before. I'm in my 40s. I have a good paying job right now. I don't need the money. I don't need the money right now. If I were in my 20s, I would probably say I want that 10 grand now. I needed it. Ah, oh, Miho is here from Japan. Welcome. Oh no. Um, I can't say your name from Brazil. Yao. Yao. I, I can't make that. A John. I know it's John. But Yao. Welcome. What's the difference between pair off and pair up? Not really that often. No, I mean, not that much. Not that much. And I say this in the classroom often when I want people to pair up. That's way more common. Pair up. Um... So I would say there's no real difference. Pair up is more common. Um, sometimes, sometimes we might say uh, to count off, count off by twos. If you want people to pair up, so a hey, um, can you guys count off by twos? I'm gonna put you into pairs. So we might say that, but um, I honestly don't hear pair off. Yeah. Let's go with pair up, pair up. Oh, um, Henry, great question. And if you want to tag me for a question, you know, if you do the little at sign, American English, that does show up and I know that it's a question. It might help me find your question sooner. All right, um, when you say your neighbors are out today, do you mean that they are physically outside or could it mean something else? No, when I said that my neighbors are out today, I can't move my camera because um, I have the microphone. But across the street, next door, both families were outside. Um, I think they're even outside, the house over there. That, can I, wait, hang on. Can I turn it? Yeah. So that house was out. I believe that house over there. They're out, and then those guys. No, they were literally outside of their house, and I didn't know if you could hear them. So that's why I said my neighbors are out today. No, physically out. Good question. Good question. Uh, Angelo has some very nice words for Rod. Very nice. Um, Eric is wondering, when you put somebody down... We have a couple terms for that. Um, like you make them feel badly. Make them feel 
badly about themselves. So maybe um, their nose is a little bit bigger than everyone else's. And if you want to put somebody down, you might mention their nose. Like, oh, hey, wow, your nose is really big. So not only is that really mean, it probably makes them feel bad. So yeah, to put somebody down. How about this, though? Uh, to put a dog down. Okay. That's totally different. If you put a dog down, does any does anybody know? I'll wait. I'll, I won't answer it right now. Answer in the chat. To put a dog down, what does that mean? That doesn't mean you're making fun of that dog. It means... Ding, ding, ding. Daniel is the winner. Right, you kill it. You kill it. And the reason you would put the dog down is because it has gotten older. Oh, when I was uh, 16, we had a dog since I was born, pretty much. The dog was 16 years old, and it was going to the bathroom in the house, and it was really having a hard time walking, but it was still living, so we had to put the dog down. My dad took the dog to the vets, and I think they injected something into the dog, and we said goodbye to Jack. Tears. Tears. Ah, Eric says I'm the best. Thank you, sir. I don't hear that often enough. Angelo is wondering, um, are you living in the province? Your place looks very nice and clean. Thank you so much. Um, we wouldn't say that in the United States. Are you living in the province? I don't know. We might say, um, a neighborhood or we might say the suburbs because I live in the suburbs. I would say that. Or sometimes you might hear for slang, like the burbs. So that's the, just the way we say the opposite of the city, the burbs. We live in the suburbs. All right, Daniel says, quick question, fish or meat? Can I say neither? Can I say neither? Um, I, I don't like fish at all, though. I really don't. We've had this discussion, and I know there are a lot of people in here that love fish. I'm sorry. I'm not a big fish fan, and I like meat, but I'm picky about my meat. I like meat if it doesn't look like it came from an animal. Like chicken nuggets, you know, they're very healthy. <laughs> Just kidding. But chicken nuggets, I mean, that doesn't look like it came from an animal. It's breaded and fried and so. I know, I know, the fish, sunshine. I'm sorry, everybody loves the fish. I'm, I just lost 10 viewers right now because I said I don't like fish. Oh, just kidding, just kidding. Um, we, and where I live in Maine, we have very good fish because we live right next to the ocean. So if you ever come to Maine, check out the fish. We have a fish called haddock and uh, it's really good. It's really good. Actually, I do, I do like haddock if it's uh, grilled with some lemon. Actually, that's actually good. It's a, okay. So uh, a really good fish. I don't know. Um, sushi. I like vegetable sushi. Oh, Pablo. Oh, yeah, it's uh, it's tough when you're a kid and oftentimes the pet is the first you know, death you really realize. Maybe a grandparent, but it's very Arroni, lobster. Yes. Maine is known for lobsters. It, it it's famous around the world. It's pretty expensive if you go outside of Maine. I know my mom Loves Maine, uh, sorry, loves lobster. And for Mother's Day, we celebrate Mother's Day in May in the United States. And every Mother's Day, my family takes my mom out for lobster. But she is the only one that eats lobster because we don't really like it. I do, I do like lobster every so often, but beginner asks, do we have sardines in Maine? 
Not really. Most people, I don't think, eat sardines in Maine. But you might hear um, when something... You don't want this during COVID, of course. But if something is really crowded, you might hear people say packed in like sardines. Packed in. Packed in. The phrasal verb. Right, so if you go to the beach during the summer, sometimes in Maine, I mean, the people are packed in like sardines. There are a lot of people that come up from a state called Massachusetts and come down from Canada, and the beaches get really packed. Uh, Sunshine says she doesn't like motion. Sunshine says she doesn't like um, sushi. Uh, on Fridays, there is a restaurant called C40, about a mile from my house, and they have sushi specials, and sometimes my daughter and I get sushi. Um, good question here. Oh, Motion is wondering, what's the difference between the outskirts and the suburbs? That's a great question. So if I first heard, oh, I live on the outskirts. So the outskirts, I would think they don't have as many people. So the suburbs might be more populated and the outskirts don't have as many people. But I, yeah, I wouldn't say I live on the outskirts simply because I can get to downtown or the city center in about 10 minutes. But yeah, some people may live further out. We would call that the outskirts. Good question. Good term to know, by the way. Sam the Taiwanese. Great question here, too. My goodness. All right. Do you say that? Uh, um, yes. Nah, well, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean that up a little bit with the prepositions, but... You say that's a, I would say, I would use it as a verb. And I would say we euthanized my dog, Jack. Ooh, youth, euthanized. Well, that's a, that's a, I don't think I sprayed anything with, with spit there, but youth, euthanized. Got to watch out with the COVID and you say euthanized. Um, is it legal to give a person an injection I think it is. It wasn't legal five years ago, but I almost think there was a law in my state. I believe in the state of Oregon, it is possible that if somebody decides they want to be put down, I don't know what we would say, euthanized, um, often uh, be able to, plain as loud, um, Dignity is often a word used with that. So, you know, they might leave this earth with dignity. I don't think it's a I don't think it's legal in my state yet, but I think it's going to be soon. So that's becoming a thing in the United States. Um Daniel would like me to take him to a Celtics game. Uh, maybe one day. I've never been to a Celtics game. I've been to a professional hockey game, a couple. I've been to a professional baseball game, a couple. A professional football game. Never a professional basketball game. Boston Celtics, about two hours from my house. Two and a half hour drive from my house. Michelle, I see that question. Michelle says, folks, do you see my questions? I saw that one. But I bet you had, oh, Oleg. Have I ever been to an NFL game? Yes, I've been to a couple. All the New England Patriots. The New England Patriots play about close to the hours from my house. They are a bit further south. Yeah, Miho, fish is very healthy, 100%. And Miho is from Japan. Japan is known for eating a lot of fish, also living longer than most people, <clears throat> right? Isn't, sorry, I caught 
directly into the microphone. I'll try to go <coughs> next time. Uh, Japan, I think, has one of the longest lifespans, we might say, of humans. I know it's not the American South. Oh, um, Michelle, I see your question. I see Mega's question, too. Are the bushes small? Oh, these, these bushes are small. They probably come up to my waist. I'm about 5'10". Um, there's another bush. That's a, that that bush right there. Where is it? Right, 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 right there. That's about as tall as I am. All right, can I use? Uh, yeah. You want me to use contamination as the noun? Okay. Um, we were going to go swimming in that river, but we could see there was a lot of contamination. So the water had been contaminated. That's the verb. Contamination means yucky stuff. Got into it. And the river, I did a video from a river and I mentioned there was contamination in that river. When I was a kid, it was nasty. It was yellow and bubbly because of all the chemicals that had been dumped into that river. Now at 44, the river looks very nice, but officials advise you not to swim in the river. Although I have seen people swim in the river. They also say you can only have one fish from that river per year. If I can only have one fish, what's going to happen if I have two? How about I have none? All right, some good questions. Oh, Daniel says, started friends for the third time. Let's go. Pivot. Pivot. Christopher is wondering, have I ever played disc golf? Yeah. Oh, is my is, Sunshine says my internet connection is bad. Anybody else having problems? Pivot. Pivot. I just said pivot again. Um, oh no, we had this problem before. I can't change it. Everybody's saying the connection's bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you still hear me? Um, Aniko is wondering what disc golf is. Yes. So I hope you can see me. Disc golf. It's a bit blurry. Disc golf is like golf. Is like golf, only you play it with frisbees, you play it with discs, and there are baskets that you try to get the disc in. And just like golf, you need a wide area, but with disc golf, they usually leave the trees up. And so it's, it's fun, it's fun. I have played it before. A couple times when I went to play disc golf, it was very buggy though. There were a lot of bugs. Maybe I'll go again. It's pretty fun. <clears throat> oh, Daniel says the Toronto hockey team won yesterday. I am such a boomer. I had to go to bed. I don't know if my son stayed up and watched it. But yeah, they were playing. Who were they playing? A team they probably should have beaten. Yeah, we've been watching quite a bit of hockey uh, lately. And who was it? I can't remember. Um, a blue team. They were up, I think, three to one or four to one. Toronto came back. Uh, yeah, Aniko, um, I should do a video from disc golf. There are many courses in Maine, not very hard, um, not very far from the house. Angelo says you can hear me well. So thank you. Thank you for that. And, you know, sometimes it's probably better just to hear me rather than see me, right? I would rather hear me. Columbus Blue Jackets. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. All right. Yeah, Simbot. Uh, contamination means pollution. Nice job. Nicely done. Ha <laughs> ha. Michelle, did I miss Michelle's? Did I miss again? 
Aniko is saying Jamie can help. Yeah. So um, right now, Jamie, my wife, if you're new here. Oh, by the way, subscribe if you're new. She is in Alabama, which is about 1,300 miles from me. And I spoke to her last night. She's trying to help her mother move into a smaller place. I have spoken about that on a previous live stream. And they are having a garage sale or a yard sale. Are you familiar with a garage sale or a yard sale? Garage. I say that word funny. Garage. A garage sale. It's basically where you put everything you don't want out on your front yard, front lawn, or garage, which is why we call it lawn sale, garage sale, lawn sale. And um, you just put everything out that you don't want. Other people come and pay you money for it. And that's what she's doing right now. <clears throat> it's lagging. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's awful. Why is this happening? And we still got 15 minutes. Um, Oleg is wondering, do I count the days off until kickoff? Um, yeah, kind of. It's, I usually do, but it's a different year this year. Hey, boy. Complainers. Ugh. I can't. The connection's just fine. All right. I don't think it is. It's all good now. Now it's back. All right. Oh, and Nico is saying that in Hungary, there aren't many garage sales. Yeah, in the U.S., people love it. I am actually not on my Wi-Fi right now. At least I hope I'm not on my Wi-Fi. No. Not, not on my Wi-Fi. If I went to my Wi-Fi, it might be worse. I don't know. We can try it. All right. I'm on my Wi-Fi now. Let's see if it's better. Uh, yeah, Daniel, um, he does like, he does. So his big game right now is, um, is it NBA 2K? I think it is something like that. He likes NBA. All right, Christopher, thank you. As long, it's better. As long as you can hear my voice. Okay, we can hear. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, cool, cool. Thank you guys. Way better. Boy likes to dunk. I'm looking for some more questions here. Does anybody have any questions? Um, Zobeda, hey, I didn't see you here. Um, Mater guy, he was saying winter. Yeah, winter. No. I. So if you're part of the Facebook group, I put a TikTok video I saw about how Mainers talk because I try not to speak like a Mainer. But Zobeda was asking uh, winter. Winter, right? That's how you should say winter. But this guy, the guy from Maine was saying winter. He was talking about the four seasons we have in winter. Uh, or in Maine. Basically, they were all winter, right? It was like, it was like winter. Almost winter. What does he say? Construction. You know, so the Maine accent uh, might be a little bit difficult for some to understand. Uh, Christopher is wondering from which store I got this. I, Jamie got me this hat. And this is uh, basically a Boston Red Sox hat. It's a baseball hat. Yeah, a boss is talking about the birds. Yeah, I love it. I love hearing the birds. And then you can hear the guy in the distance mowing his lawn. All right, um, Aroni also... If you are looking for a podcast to learn Italian, check out Aroni. He's got a good podcast. Um, Sunshine asks, posh? posh? We do not use that word or that term in the United States as much as they do in England. But in this, I, I love the word posh. I think it, it fits so well. It lets everybody know what you're thinking. But we might say uh, fancy. That might be what we say. And it's, it's not quite the same, but we don't say posh in the United States. All right, and Daniel um, 
says follow him on Instagram right there. Oh, I have an Instagram. Hey, by the way, I don't know. I have an Instagram too. And if you follow me there, I think I follow Daniel. I have been putting up smaller lessons. That yeah, might not work. Yeah. Uh, YouTube doesn't like it when you um, link to Instagram because it takes you off their platform. They want to try to keep you here on YouTube. But I do have three or four videos. Basically what I do is I look at questions that I get that are too hard to answer in the live stream, but they don't really require a long video. So most of them are about two minutes. And I think I've done a couple good ones on there. I need to talk about conserve and preserve. Somebody asked that question. And sometimes I go back through the live stream to questions I didn't answer, and I will put it on Instagram. All right, the Mountain Eagle is wondering, what does Karen mean in the U.S.? So basically, oh, Aroni. Thank you, sir. Um, what does Karen mean? Basically, it's a woman my age. So boomers are are technically older than I am. Boomers are in their 70s, probably. Karens are in their 40s, maybe 50s. And they complain a lot about things that really aren't that important. Like maybe they're all very concerned about eating vegan. And they get mad when a restaurant doesn't have vegan offerings. And then they make the internet because they're ranting. Something like that. Karen. Karen. Oh, Daniel. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Pablo. Yeah. Can you say fella? Oh, can you say fellas in a good con? Um, probably that would be mostly just for guys. Like, what are you fellas doing? It would probably just be for guys. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, it's totally fine if there are a bunch of guys and maybe your friends. Hey, what are you fellas doing today? But it should be all guys. You can say, what are you guys doing? And there could be some women involved. So guys is probably a little safer. Chic. That's how we pronounce that. Athos. Chic. Yeah, we sometimes say chic. Uh, it's a little outdated maybe. But... Um, people would know, I think, what you're saying. Chic. Oh, geez. Oleg is, is bringing up the Urban Dictionary. Be careful with the Urban Dictionary. I'm afraid sometimes to go on Urban Dictionary. But I think if you look up Brent in the Ur Urban Dictionary, there are some good definitions for Brent. Some not-so-good definitions, but... Urban, urban, urban dictionary. All right, here we go. For Brent. I know you may have some good questions. I will get to them, but let's put up a look, look at this. Oh, I, I'm not even kidding. Right, here, this is the definition. I would agree with this. I would agree. Right here. So my name is Brent. In case you didn't know, a loyal trustworthy guy who is capable of making everyone smile if he wants to urban dictionary you did not let me down look at that look at that it's got to be some more urban dictionary brent what look at this i i was hoping to find a bad one but there isn't one no there might be if i look hard enough look at look at this he is kind, respectful, and trustworthy, and always puts those he cares for first. It's almost like they know me. How? There are other Brents in the United States. Come on, let's find a bad one. I'm not even kidding. All right. Okay. I, I could do this all day. This is really stoking my ego. This is really making me feel good. 
this is true right here. This is the definition of Brent. The most amazing man on the planet. Hilarious, beautiful, is always there for the people that need him the most. Someone loves him very much and he is totally oblivious to it. Oblivious means they aren't aware. You don't realize it. So if someone is oblivious to their house being on fire, that would be a problem. You should be able to recognize it, Brent. Come on, I'm looking for a bad, de there isn't, be careful. If you look up your own name on Urban Dictionary, be careful because it's often, it's often pretty bad. It's often pretty bad. Michelle says, I think the people who write in the dictionary, they watch you. They must. They must. Ah, I'm just kidding. That's, that's pretty cool, though. I, I wanted to find a bad one so we could make fun of me. Make fun of me. But we didn't. Uh, why are there no fences rarely around houses? Yeah. Oh. Should we take... Let's take a trip. So, we only have about five minutes, but I'll show you. I'll show you something here. You don't want too close in my face. There, there, I, there are a few fences around. This is my Wi-Fi. My Wi-Fi. But let's turn around. And I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Can you hear me? You're on Wi-Fi, everybody is saying. So, there's a hole. There's a hole in that fence. Oh, is it bad? Just don't get too cocky. I won't get too cocky. There's a hole in that fence. And my son put a hockey puck through that fence. So we have to pay to get it fixed. Can you see that? Can you see that? I don't really want to embarrass my son. But there's a... There's a rink on the other side of that house, an ice rink, and he shot a puck. He shot a puck through that. So um, we've already paid for it. They haven't fixed it yet, but there, the house um, fences are expensive, and so you often don't need a fence, really. Here, uh, I do have a fence in my backyard, but a win, uh, a storm came through. A storm, <coughs> excuse me, came through and uh, knocked part of my fence down. So now I need to, wait, is he live streaming now? No, we, we got about three minutes. We got about three minutes. Um, I hope you guys saw that. Yeah, some action. Cecilia, we, we, we went, we did a little field trip there. So I hope that um, didn't totally mess up. I hope that totally didn't mess up the uh, the stream. But yeah, um, oh, Cecilia says in Argentina there are fences everywhere. Yeah, my neighbor on this side, we don't have a fence. On the other side, we don't have a fence. Uh, there's, we'll, we'll end here because I, I would like, oh no, Ivana. I need to go check out Ivana's name. Let's look it up together. No, I won't do that to you. I'll, I'll check it out after. But it's probably not, probably for the women, there are way meaner things that are being said. But um, um, we have a saying in the United States, fences make good neighbors. So basically meaning people get along better if they have a fence up. So how many minutes do we have? We only have about two minutes. I will leave a link to Bob the Canadian's channel. When you go over there, if you could say, hey, I came from Brent's channel to let him know that we're all supporting him. Uh, the two hour, two hour English learning. Um, I hope that really helps uh, between my channel and Bob the Canadian's channel, two hours on Friday, two hours on Saturday of listening to native English speakers speak. I'm hoping that's really helping with your English comprehension. Oh, 
Michelle says fences are ubiquitous. That is a great term right there. Great word. You used it perfectly. I did make a video on words that are really hard to use. You used it very nicely. So why don't we all hop over to Bob's channel if you can. I left the link there and we will get out of here and I will continue to talk to you guys in the chat. Thank you so much for joining and I'll see you next time. Adios, amigos.